Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be showing you a really cool app called WinLater, which allows you to play Windows games on Android. So let's check it out. Now, this has been on my radar for the past two weeks. I just haven't had a chance to test it out, but it is pretty impressive. Majority of it is based on uh, Box86, but the developer of WinLater did an impressive job porting this into Android, which makes it super easy and convenient to play and run Windows games. So I'm gonna show you what it's all about before I show you the installation steps. So here we have my tablet, uh, which I'm gonna be doing a review for. This is a dodgy uh, T20S, and that'll be coming soon. But Basically any newer Android devices uh, would be able to run uh, Windows games. So when you get the application installed, the first thing you're gonna notice is that you need to install these containers. You could do this by pressing plus, which gives you all this um, properties to adjust the wine emulator. And in here we have the name of the container. We could set the resolution size. Um, we could also set the graphic drivers. Now the graphic drivers have a few. We have a software, LLVM pipe, uh, we have this turnip and zinc, and we have virtual GL. Now, if you are using anything that's Mali GPU, you're gonna have to stick with virtual GL or the software. But if you're using anything like um, Snapdragon and they have their own GPU, you could use the turnip zinc, which is a much better alternative because you can play more games. Now, being in virtual GL, you only can use uh, Wine Direct 3D 7.8 and Wine Direct 3D uh, 8.0. But if I switch this over to using Turnip, I could use uh, Vulkan or Direct X Vulkan or DXVK or D8VK, uh, which has a Vulkan translation to it. So these automatically populates if I'm able to use a CPU that has uh, Snapdragon installed. Now, software works for both, so you could use either one, but software obviously is gonna be much slower. Now I'm gonna set with, with Virtual GL because this is a Mali uh, graphic card. And uh, normally I would set to 8.0. Here you can set the processor affinity or the CPU cores. Uh, generally, if you have eight cores, it'll select the last four. If you have six cores, I would just go in and probably check those off. Down here, you could set and in change your GPU. So some games require like a newer, they'll detect if it's a newer graphic card or not. So you could actually change the properties to this to like GT470, which is a lot of games that are minimum requirements. Or you could change it to a 1070 if you wanted to. It's not gonna produce the speed, it's just basically telling the game, hey, this is the graphic card you got. Then um, video memory, uh, depending on what you're gonna play, uh, you could stick with two gigs or use four gigs. I'm sticking with two. The most important part is going over to DX components and setting direct sound to native. This way it will give you sound. Once you're done, you hit the check mark. Now it's gonna create this container and it actually will open up a Windows Explorer or file manager, you could say. Now going into my container number two or the newly created container, I could just hit these three dots, go over to run, and here you get a desktop uh, just like Wine and you get the little start menu, which is useless, but uh, your programs are actually in D drive. So D drive is actually your download drive. And I have a couple of games in here, Faster and Light, Need for Speed Most Wanted, Stardew Valley, and X2. So anytime that you want to add a game, you would go into say Stardew Valley. Actually, that's a bad game to do because there's a lot of files in there. So let's just do Fast and Light. Let's go into Fast and Light. And you're going to look for the game EXE, so F FTL game. Two finger touch to right click, and then you could create a shortcut. Once you create a shortcut, if I minimize this, you're gonna see it on the desktop right there. And to get out of this, all you have to do is just close out of this program. Are you sure you wanna exit? Yes. And then now, if I go over to here, the three slides, of three dots over there, go over to shortcuts, I have most of my games all created with shortcuts. Now these are all from container one, and then the second FTL, you see it's from container two. So I'm gonna play off container one, just because I have everything all set up with the resolution and everything. And there we have loaded the game. And I could use my mouse to control, to go wherever I wanna go. New game, continue, tutorial, options, whatever I want. Now, if I want more controls, I would slide up, hit the back button, go to uh, input controls, and then I could actually set up my own configurations. They do have one pre-configured, and it's called RTS, but it gives you the up, down, left, right, one, two, three, four, five, uh, a, B, C, D, and then you actually got mm, buttons over here, which is enter, escape, middle mouse button, right click, left click, stuff like that. So you could actually use um, button, touchscreen buttons. Now it doesn't work for this game because this game is not touch uh, for buttons itself, 
but you could see everything is loaded. And it's running about 33 frames per second for FTL. And that's not too bad. I actually wouldn't mind playing this game like this on this device. But if I hit over to new game, I'm gonna confirm because it's gonna lose my old same game. You can see everything runs perfectly fine. I could just hit, let me go to easy, start, and it's paused. I could go to continue and basically play the game this way, you know? So I'm not gonna really play, but I'm just showing you guys it, it, it works pretty good. Let me see if I could jump, jump. And I'll jump over to this sector. There you go, 55, 56 frames per second. Well, this doesn't take much to run, but it is pretty good. Now to exit the game, you can hit the back button again, and then you go to exit. Now, another favorite of mine that I've been playing with my son a lot recently is Stardew Valley. So that works. Here's the thing, your mileage may vary depending on game because I was not able to get this properly working on this device. So you'll see what I mean. All right, so here we go. It's booted up onto this tablet, but you could see it's flashing the screen. It's almost, well, it's technically unplayable this way. But if I played this on the phone, which is Dodgy V20 Pro, um, this works perfectly fine. So let me lower this volume as I let that go. And the resolution is really low on that. <clears throat> but if I was to play Stardew Valley on the phone, here it works perfectly fine. You see that? This one doesn't flash. And it's the same game. So yeah, it is a little frustrating, but your mileage may vary depending on what device you're, you're using. I'm gonna lower the volume on that, but I'm gonna exit that game. Now for more intense games, I did try um, X2, which is um, open world space shooter of the X franchise. So if you play X4 or X3, uh, this is one of the best ones, X2. I actually own this game CD box set and everything. But yeah, most of the games that I get on this device are from DRM free, which is usually from GOG or stuff like that. Install it on your PC and I just transfer the files over to the download directory and I could just open it with the EXE. Doesn't require any installation through this device. You just install it on your PC so it extracts all the files and then copy it over. Now I'm not actually gonna play this game, uh, but I'm just showing you that it does work. And it does take a while to load the initial, you know, to get into your spaceship scene. So I'm not even gonna load that, but I'm gonna show you um, this part at least. And here we go. Now I can't really use the mouse. Oh, let me put the sound up a little. So what you have to do is actually open up the menu, input controls, and then grab that RTS setting. You could actually make your own, like I said. But now I could go, oops. Press some of the stuff, hit escape, I'll come back out. You see how it's like animating? And it does pretty good. It's getting about 30 frames per second just going between those scenes. And yeah, this is X2. I'm gonna exit. And if you exit a program normally like that, it'll just toss you back out. Now I did try to get Need for Speed working on this. It did work at one point and then I played around with the settings and then it stopped working. And that's just my fault because I screwed up the resolution. But uh, stuff like uh, Need for Speed, X2, anything I think 2012 and before uh, seems to work pretty well with this. Anything that's DirectX 9. Uh, if you need a newer game like DirectX 10 or DirectX 11, then you will actually need to use the Snapdragon CPU, which will allow you to use the Vulkan uh, drivers to allow to run uh, DirectX 11. To install this application, it's super simple. After you download Winator from this website over here, which is his GitHub, go to release, download this file. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you're gonna see another release for the OBB. And you grab the OBB file, which contains the wine information and everything else. Uh, head back into your Android, this is how I did it. You go into files, head over to internal storage, I hit it to download. I have um, an OBB file and what you need to transfer, again, it's in there with GitHub and you go over to Android OBB and you just have to paste it into com.winlater. And then you should have one file in there called OBB. Well, it's installed already so you don't see it, but that's where you transfer the file to and that is it. Once you start it up, everything gets installed and you're off to the races. It's, it works right away. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I, I had a lot of fun playing with this. You can run some software supposedly, on this, like maybe Notepad++ or something, but mainly it's designed for games. So 
again, your mileage may vary. I wasn't able to get any keyboard controls working. I wasn't able to get any joystick working, uh, Bluetooth keyboards or anything working on this. So uh, those probably will have to be fixed in the future. But for now, we do get the touchscreen controls. And for simple games like Stardew Valley or even uh, uh, Faster Than Light FTL, you, we could definitely just use the mouse and play around with it. But for more intense games like X2 or even Need for Speed Most Wanted, I would definitely want to use a controller for that. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And then say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.